Hi everybody, Kurt here. Welcome back to my channel. What I wanted to talk about today is just the, the most basic view of how to use VOR navigation and your uh, omni bearing selectors in general aviation planes. Um, I saw a discussion going on in a Discord today where a guy just had no idea how this stuff works. You know, it's not complicated, but it's more than you can reasonably discuss in a Discord channel quickly, right? So it made me think, well, all right, uh, I guess I'll put a video together real quick. So what I've done is put us at uh, Dell City uh, Municipal Airport. This is in uh, West Texas. The reason I selected this one is it's a relatively flat valley we're in. There are mountains around, but they're kind of in the distance. And the reason I wanted this is to have decent range on the VORs that I was picking. So I tried to tune salt flat here, and I can't pick it up even at uh, just over 10 nautical miles. I even went up and flew around a little bit, and it just doesn't come in. So it's possible that this one either is a new VOR or it has been decommissioned since last time Flight Sim updated. Um, I was starting to think I had a problem with my radio, but I tuned in um, Hudspeth over here and it popped in just fine, even at twice the distance. We're using the uh, JP Logistics uh, 152. Uh, link will be in the description. It's a fantastic 152 if you don't already have it. Hudspeth is 115.0. Uh, you can see here, Dell City is, so these already have the magnetic deviation built in uh, your VORs. So you can see zero here would be due north magnetic. And it looks like Dell City is going to be right around um, you know, zero, 010, zero, maybe zero, 015 from there. We'll find out in a second. So since we know that uh, Dell, or rather Hudspeth is uh, 115.0, and I've already got that in my nav two, but we're going to put it into nav one up here. So on these real simple stacks, you're always tuning on the on the standby. We've already got 115, and then the little knob will take us to, whoops, to zero, like that. And this little switch changes you over uh, to make that your active. Coming back over here, let's talk real quickly about these indicators and how they work. Um, they always have some sort of a flag to let you know if they have data or not. Um, in the case of these ones, it's these little red flags. So you can see here on my nav two, they're both lit up red, which means we don't have vertical guidance. This would be if you were on uh, ILS. And we don't have horizontal guidance, either VOR or localizer. When we tuned in um, the Hudspeth VOR up here and this came to life, you can see we have horizontal data and we do not have uh, vertical. So what it's telling you is this is a VOR and it is not a low, uh, an ILS. So the way you use a, a radio navigate on the ground, uh, and again, this is very basic visual flight type stuff. I'm not getting into real IFR, but we do use these in visual flight just for reference and to help us navigate a little bit. What you do is you figure out where it is you want to be relative to it. And each of these positions out here is, a, you know, this is a compass rose basically. And um, the different locations off of it are radials. So like this would be the zero radial that extends out this way. Um, so when you want to get to one, when you're headed toward one, you would just find the radial you need and just track along that. And then you'll fly to keep the needle centered, which I'll demonstrate in a second. Another thing that they can be used for is to define intersections. And so for instance, here you see this Connie intersection and it's on the 300 radial off of Salt Flat and it's on, I don't know, what, 355 or so from Hudspeth and whatever that exact number is, the two would come together and it would define that point in space. So you don't need to navigate directly to the station. You can navigate to intersections from them or if the plane's equipped, you might go to a DME. So DME being distance measuring equipment, and we know, for instance, on our sectional charts, this ring is always drawn at 10 miles from the station. So any point along this ring, you would have whatever radial you're on and you'd have uh, 10 miles DME. But for today, we're not going to get into all that. I just want to show you uh, how to tune it and how to fly it. So, so to tune it, you use this OBS. This is Omni Bearing Selector. Uh, and for your reference, the, the gauge is Omni Bearing Indicator. Um, and when you rotate this ring, it changes this compass position out here. And then you have to and from here, which tells you which direction you are on your radial. So we know that we're going to want about a 010 radial. So if I dial this so that it's at about 010, you're going to see as we get close to it, this needle's going to center up. Here it comes. And wherever it centers, that's where you exactly are. So we're, yeah, pretty close to 010 there. Uh, and right now we're from that. If we changed it to... Uh, to be on the 190 or 19 maybe one that is um this would pop to two as a matter of fact i can show you that right now
And once we center it back up here, you can see we're on the reciprocal heading, and now it says two. So what this flag's telling you, it doesn't have anything to do with what direction the airplane's flying. It just has to do with the heading to get to or from the VOR station. So if we are flying on a heading of 190191 roughly, uh, we will be heading to the station if we keep this indicator centered. Similarly, when it said from before, if we were flying on 010 or 011, this would say from, and we would be flying from the station. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to leave this on uh, 190, 191, whatever we're at here, and we're going to track this station uh, down to the Hudspeth VOR, and you'll see how it kind of works. So let's get going. Okay, and you can already see that the uh, the arrow is beginning to move. It's a very precise uh, kind of instrument. So as we move away from the position we were at, the needle starts to deviate. And that'll make more sense as we turn toward the station. So what I'm gonna do now is we'll turn to, uh, oh, I don't know, 150 or so. Okay, so now we're headed, you know, south-ish, but not directly at the station. And now this needle makes more sense because the needle is off to our right. And what it's telling us is that our position along the radial we want is off to our right. So even if I turn to about 190, which is the radial, we're still not gonna be tracking the radial because the actual position of it is off to our right, as, as you'd be able to see on the map. So if you were to follow that um, 010 up on the thing here, you'd see it's kinda, it goes over the airport, not over us, and that would be just off to our left. So we'll turn over about, uh, let's say, uh, 210 degrees. And that'll cause us to slowly start tracking back onto where the radial really is. And you'll see that the needle will start to come in. We'll probably speed up the time here a little bit just to save your sanity. now we can start to turn toward that 190 heading. And what you're going to discover, depending on how the winds are, is that tracking the exact heading isn't necessarily going to be maintaining the, the radial. Um, wind will blow you off a little bit, so it is a w kind of wind corrected. So what you'll do, initially you fly the intended heading and you just kind of keep an eye on what the, what the needle does. If you see the needle starting to drift, then you can put in a little bit of a of a correction. There is some wind today, it's a little bumpy, it's not too strong really, so we may see some drift here after a few minutes. And if you see the map in the corner there, the um, we're tracking pretty much right along the line that we wanted. The other thing with VORs is the closer you get to them, kind of the more sensitive it becomes. Um, and so typically in the last mile or two, you almost disregard uh, what it's saying and just kind of fly across it and once you're about two miles the other side of it start tracking you know really paying attention to the needle again so you end up with a kind of a dead zone within about a mile of the VOR and it's just because it becomes hypersensitive seems like about 195 is kind of the magic spot for us today And since we're not getting the um, salt flat VOR, what I'm going to do is let's say that we're going to fly to this uh, Hudspeth uh, VOR, which is the one we're tracking. And when we get there, we want to depart it on a, let's say, the 270 uh, radial. So we're going to fly out west, but we want to fly to the radial or to the VOR, and then we're going to we're going to turn out to the west. So let me put. Hudspeth back onto the VOR2, and you can see it come to life down there. And now what I'm going to do is set that OBS to um, about 270. So for now, we continue to we continue to just navigate on this one. And we're a little bit off to the left, of course, here, so I'm going to turn just a smidge. And that's centered back up pretty much, so we'll just kind of bring it back to where we were. 
So when you don't have a DME of any sort, the way you're going to know when you're getting over the station is you'll see the, uh, the flag here switch from to to from, meaning you pass the station. And so strictly what we would do here, since we don't have DME and we want to track the 27 out, we're going to fly on the current heading until we see the uh, uh, until we see it switch from to to from and then once that happens we're going to turn to 270 and we're going to be off to the right of that course but we'll correct that on the way out and it makes sort of a sort of a teardrop path uh, when you do this and again we're off a little bit to the left of our track so I'm just going to kind of correct over a little and that's going to get increasingly sensitive as we get down in the last couple miles here and you can see I'm having to make more corrections more often because it's getting really overly sensitive and this is that period where I'm talking about in the last mile or two where you just kind of have to pick a, a heading and more or less stick to it because trying to track the radial becomes a circus and we're just periodically keeping an eye on this little arrow here when it points down we pass the station we'll also see in the bottom window here um, right around the time when this switches we're going to see this switch from one side to the other that's going to also indicate passing the station. Okay, here it comes. Boop. And no signal, and boop. Arrows have flipped. So we would start our turn now to 270 because we're going to pick up the track on this guy. And I'm going to turn a little past 270 because we know it's off to our right. So I'm going to take it to, say, 285, 290 maybe. And while we're flying this track, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on that little mountain out there in the distance. That's going to be my visual reference because we're not flying IFR. And while I wait for that, I'm going to go ahead and tune this to 270 so I can start tracking on the on the primary. Okay, and here it comes. You can see it's moving real fast because we're close to the station. And I'm going to overshoot it a bit here. So we'll just fly just a couple degrees. We'll call it 265 for now and we'll wait for that to come back in. And you can see on the map what's going on there. We're now tracking outbound on this 270 radial. And that's the basics of how we get around on these. So all you really need to know is whatever you dial in uh, on your on your OBS is the radial that you're attempting to track. Okay, and the radial is always going to be the magnetic heading that you need to you know of the course that you're that you're tracking. The needle tells you whether you're left or right of your course, and you just try to center that up. So like for now, if we wanted to switch over to, I don't know go over to 280 and we knew it was going to be to the right so off it went to the right and we turn right we're going to need to go a little bit beyond 280 because we need to pull it in and all you need to remember as far as what's going on is that these are like the spokes on a bicycle wheel going out right so where you are on the bicycle wheel is what you're kind of trying to keep track of And if you fly, for instance, I've got 280 dialed in. If I fly 280 and I'm not on the radial, I would be kind of flying parallel to that spoke of the wheel, right? So to be on the radial, you do need to turn a little beyond it so that you can set up an intersection on it. And it's kind of like the magenta line you would see if you were using a Garmin. So now we'd be sort of approaching that magenta line. If you do this on a Garmin, you can actually watch it. And then we'll turn to our heading.
and we'd be tracking the line now. So there you go. Hope that helped you guys. Uh, I'm keeping it real brief this one. Wasn't even planning to make it until I saw that discussion this morning, but I thought it might be helpful to some of the newer pilots. I hope I've earned a like or maybe a subscription from you, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.